Hi, I'm gonna review this DC DC step down converter in a while. Why do I need it? As you may know, I'm building a 84 volt uh, one wheel and it needs a reliable 5 volt uh, source for lights and maybe something more. So, if you wanna see why this thing exploded during my tests and why I still don't think it's a bad product, stick with me and we'll find out. You can find those on eBay, AliExpress and similar website. It's a cheap one. Let's find out if it's any good. It's rated all the way up to 120 volts DC for the input. The output of this one is rated at 3 amps. Although you have different ones, you can get the versions that are only up to 90 volts, I think. And you can get versions with the output of 12 or 5 volts. And I think... Uh, 2 or 3 amps, the 2 amp version doesn't have the heat sink. it's possible that all the rest is the same, but I don't know that. So I said mine is a 5 volt 3 amp output and a 120 volts DC input. For this test I'm going to be using a high voltage power supply, an electronic load and a multimeter to measure the temperature on the heat sink. With this equipment I think I can properly test what this thing can do and how reliable it is. So let's do it. I'm gonna start with 80 volts DC. Temperature is about 20 degrees Celsius. As you can see, we have 5.25 volts with no load. While turning one amp of electronic load, the voltage drops to 4.97 volts. Now let's get some more input voltage. So to 99, 100, 110, 100. 12, 114, 15, 17, let's stop right there. You can see at about 116, let's say above 115 volts, the output voltage started rising above 5. That's not a good sign. Let's see what happens. Rising the input voltage all the way to 119 volts, it's already above 8, stopped at 120 volts on the left top corner at this point i would say everything looks okay up to 110 volts above that i don't think this thing works as it should either some components are of bad chinese quality or the data of it is not exactly true and it doesn't handle 120 volts but everything is still alive let's see what's next Okay, dropping the voltage down again and under 115 the voltage is back stable at 5.25 that's with no load on it okay going down to 60 volts 50 volts everything looks fine with no load on it right now now let's switch on one amp load okay the voltage drops to 4.97 which is not bad Going to the 2 amp load, the voltage drops a little bit to 4.87, but it's stable. Temperature is rising a little bit, nothing too bad. Let's crank up the load to 3 amp, okay, voltage drops to 4.81, which is still not bad, at least it's stable and the temperature is rising quite quickly now with the 3 amp load on i'm gonna go higher with the input voltage 80 90 100 110 we already know from before that above 110 the output can go above 5 volts 120 oh and that's where i made a mistake and i went all the way 130 volts input voltage let's see what happens the output goes all the way to 51 volts which is not a good sign just 10 volts above 120 which was not planned I mistakenly raised it all the way to 130 at this point I lowered the input voltage because I've seen my mistake but what happens is on the load you can see the output voltage is not going down 
That's a sign that something's not working properly anymore. With the voltage staying above 30 volts, the output capacitor can handle that anymore, and that's where it exploded. Let's stop right here and agree that the reason why it exploded was actually me rising the voltage 10 volts above the 120 limit where it's supposed to be. So it's totally my fault that happened. Since I didn't finish all the tests I wanted to do, and the second piece of this that I ordered uh, didn't arrive yet, because I ordered them from two different sellers, the only way to finish the test was to repair the bad model. The capacitor was not the only thing that uh, needed to be replaced, so I put the heatsink down under it, there's a MOSFET, two diodes, and some chip, measured the MOSFET, it was broken, and uh, since the diodes were glued to the heatsink very well, while I was pulling the heatsink down, I damaged both of the diodes, and also a little bit of the PCB. I ended up replacing the MOSFET, the two diodes, and made two bridges across the damaged PCB, just to patch it up. It doesn't matter if it doesn't look nice, because I'm gonna use the new unit in my one wheel, and I'm gonna use this one just to finish the tests where we left them. Okay, back and running. This time I'm not gonna go over 120 volts. I put back the heatsink just with some uh, gap filler and a cable tie. So we start at 80 volts, and we see that everything works fine again. Put the load to 2 amps, to 3 amps, everything looks fine, temperature is rising, that's normal, and what I wanted to do before, and I didn't, was changing the input voltage a little bit faster, to see if the output voltage stays stable or not. You can see I'm changing the input voltage quite fast at the top load of 3 amp, and uh, the voltage the output stays quite stable, which is nice. So what I wanted to see is where the temperature kind of stabilized, and first I did it with one and a half amps, and stayed quite stable at about 55 degrees, which is totally fine. Then I went to two amp, and the temperature stabilized at about 66, which is also not bad. Next step was 3 amps, and the temperature was rising slowly and got to about 86 degrees. So at maximum output current, it was still in, let's say, normal operational temperature for electronics, which is quite promising. Then I put the current a little bit down to 2.5 and amps, and you can see the temperature is dropping already, which means at 2.5 and amps it's not gonna get that hot. At 3 amps maybe, but how much current do we actually need for lights? I think 1.5 and amps is enough, but we'll see that when I actually design the lights for my one wheel, which are in progress. And since the test is nearly finished, I ended up rising the input voltage back to 120 volts. Let's see what happens. This time the output stays at 5 where it should be. This tells us that one of the original components was of poor quality and ended up working improperly just above 115 volts. When I replaced the MOSFET and the diodes and the capacitor with the non-Chinese components, the thing actually started working as it should at the beginning of the test. Dropping the input voltage all the way to 20 volts, everything looks fine. Dropping the voltage all the way to 10 volts, everything looks fine. And the very last test, I was planning to use a 5 volt relay powered from the little Fokker to power on this guy. 
So let's see if the inrush current makes any sparks while connecting this thing to the power source. Well, hard to say if those sparks are gonna kill the relay or not. There's clearly a little bit high inrush current, but not that bad as expected. Uh, so I'm still not sure if I'm going to use the relay or not. I can provide feedback for that later. Maybe I'm going to use a MOSFET instead of a relay, so this won't be a problem. What's the conclusion of this test? I think this is not a bad product, at least not for its cheap price. Uh, it's true it doesn't work as specified all the way to 120 volts, but I'm building a 20S one wheel that's gonna be 84 volts maximum voltage. Also, while braking, I think the spikes really shouldn't go above 100. So, I guess this is a totally fine DC step down converter to use. All you need to consider is you shouldn't use it above 110 volts. If you load it up at constant current of 3 amps, it's gonna heat up a little bit, but not that bad. Despite the thing that I'm an idiot that blew this thing up, I think it works just fine and I'm gonna use it in my project. I hope this was helpful and see you next time.